Hello and welcome back to the Biochemistry for Health Sciences channel. In today's video, we shall look at cholesterol synthesis. Just a reminder, we talked about three states of a human. Uh, in this video, we are still continuing with the postprandial state. Most of your cholesterol is synthesized by the liver. The uh, intestinal cells as well as the brain also makes a little bit of cholesterol, but we will focus on cholesterol synthesis here in hepatocytes, the cells of the liver. Just a quick reminder about the structure of cholesterol. It has this characteristic four rings that are fused together that's called the styrene ring and we call these rings a b c and d cholesterol this ol here is because there is a hydroxyl group that makes it an alcohol so cholesterol is an alcohol about 30 percent of cholesterol comes from the diet and the remaining is synthesized mainly by the liver, but as we mentioned, a little also by the intestine as well as the brain. Now, it's important to note that although we can synthesize cholesterol, we cannot break this ring down. We cannot catabolize this tyrene ring. So therefore, if, we, if your body has excess cholesterol, the way we get rid of it is the liver excretes it into bile. So in bile, you'll see cholesterol in the form of cholesterol or cholesterol that has been modified and made into bile salts. Remember, cholesterol is not water soluble. Therefore, you are not going to see cholesterol in the urine. It's not going to be excreted by the kidneys. Okay, do you remember why we need cholesterol? So one important function of cholesterol is that it is part of membranes and in the membrane it helps maintain membrane fluidity. Remember that means we don't want the membrane to be too solid or we won't, don't want it to be too liquid. So cholesterol helps in making sure that the membrane has the right amount of fluidity. The second importance of cholesterol is that the steroid hormones are made from cholesterol. So for example, the hormones in the reproductive system, progesterone, estradiol for females, testosterone for males, is made from cholesterol. The, um, the um, adrenal glands, the adrenal cortex secretes uh, cortisol that is made from cholesterol, as well as aldosterone that is made from cholesterol. The third importance of cholesterol is that bile salts are actually made from cholesterol. So for example, cholic acid is in one of the many bile salts is made from cholesterol. We have a variety of bile salts and these bile salts are very important for digestion of lipids and bile salts also help solubilize the cholesterol that is found in bile. You can see from the structure of bile salts, of course, the rings, the A, B, C, D rings are hydrophobic, but then you have a lot of these uh, hydrophilic groups, these polar groups, uh, that makes bile salts a surfactant or a detergent, and these detergents help emulsify the fat by forming micelles, we'll talk about this later, by forming micelles, the fat particle is broken down to smaller size particles, and that helps the enzyme lipase in hydrolyzing the triglycerides in these smaller fat particles. So this is very important for digestion of triglycerides. Cholesterol is also very important for the synthesis of vitamin D. We'll see in the synthesis of cholesterol, one of the intermediates in the synthesis of cholesterol is 7-D hydrocholesterol. Uh, in the skin, in the presence of sunlight, that's converted to cholecalciferol, which then goes to the liver, and there it is converted to calcidiol. And then from the liver, it goes to the kidney, and the calcidiol becomes a very, very active form of vitamin D, and that's called calcitriol. 
So cholesterol is important, plays an important role in the uh, synthesis of the active form of vitamin D called calcitriol. Okay, so with that background, let's now look at the key steps, the major steps of synthesis of cholesterol. Now, cholesterol synthesis occurs in the cytoplasm. So what we need is we need acetyl-CoA because cholesterol carbons come from acetyl-CoA. So we need acetyl-CoA in the cytoplasm. And the way the cell gets acetyl-CoA in the cytoplasm is exactly as what we saw in fatty acid synthesis. The citrate in the mitochondrial matrix is transported out into the cytoplasm and there the citrate lies, breaks down the citrate into acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate, which is the oxaloacetate is then further converted to pyruvate and then pyruvate gets converted to oxaloacetate and then here we have our TCA cycle forming citrate again. So citrate helps get the acetyl-CoA out into the cytoplasm. So once we have this acetyl-CoA, then we should be able to make cholesterol in the cytoplasm. So once acetyl-CoA is in the cytoplasm, what will happen is three acetyl-CoA, so you can see two acetyl-CoAs will combine with one another to form acetoacetyl-CoA, and then the third one will react with acetoacetyl-CoA to form HMG-CoA. So basically, acetyl-CoA will be converted into this one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbon HMG-CoA, because remember, acetyl-CoA has two carbons. So by combining three acetyl-CoAs, we form this six carbon HMG-CoA. Uh, interesting to note that uh, this reaction happens in the cytoplasm, however, Later, when we talk about late starvation, we'll look at this very important concept, and that's the formation of ketone bodies. These reactions here are very similar to ketone body formation that happens in the mitochondria. That's something we'll talk about under late starvation. In the next reaction, HMG-CoA is reduced to mevalonate. So basically, this coenzyme A is removed, and then this carbon here is reduced to an alcohol. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase, and this is the most important enzyme that regulates cholesterol synthesis. So most of your cholesterol synthesis is regulated right here. Notice that synthesis of cholesterol requires NADPH. Okay, so we need NADPH in order to synthesize cholesterol, and we'll talk about NADPH production in a future video. So if uh, your body has too much cholesterol and we want to reduce the amount of cholesterol in the body, uh, of course, one way would be change, changing the diet because diet brings in cholesterol. Uh, the second way to do that is using drugs. Uh, there are many types of statin drugs and these statin drugs are competitive inhibitors of HMG-CoA reductase. So by reducing this reaction rate, we can reduce the amount of cholesterol that is synthesized by your body. And remember, that's about 70% of all the cholesterol that is found in your body. In the next step, mevalonate is converted into iso pentanyl pyrophosphate in a few reactions. Uh, IPP is isopentanyl pyrophosphate. IPP looks like the chemical isoprene. It has a reactive double bond here, and there's also this reactive pyrophosphate group at the other end. These reactions in the conversion of mevalonate to IPP require quite a bit of ATP, and that's why it makes sense to make cholesterol when there is a lot of ATP present, and that is after a meal. In the next step, some of the IPP is isomerized into DMAPP, dimethyl allyl PP, pyrophosphate. 
So this set of reactions where we convert acetyl-CoA all the way down to IPP and DMAPP, this part of the pathway is also sometimes called the mevalonate pathway. In the next step, one IPP and one DMAPP will react with one another to form geronyl pyrophosphate. So notice this is one, two, three, four, five. This is five carbons. DMAPP is also five carbons. So joining the two together gives us a 10 carbon intermediate called geronyl pyrophosphate. And in the next step, another IPP will react to the with the geronyl pyrophosphate to give us farnesyl pyrophosphate. So 10 carbons here, five carbons here, that gives us 15 carbon intermediate called farnesyl pyrophosphate. It should be noted that these uh, intermediates, farnesyl and geronyl, have many other uses in the body. For example, farnesyl and geronyl chains are used for the covalent attachment of certain proteins to the plasma membrane. This is to make sure that the proteins uh, are, that function at the plasma membrane remain at the plasma membrane. So by attaching these proteins with geronyl and farnesyl chains, uh, the cell makes certain that the proteins are located near the plasma membrane. Another use is for glycoprotein synthesis. Farnesyl pyrophosphate is used to make a chemical called dolicol. A dolicol has about 14 to 24 isoprene units. So that comes from farnesyl pyrophosphate and dolicol plays a very important role in the synthesis of glycoproteins in the endoplasmic reticulum. And another use for farnesyl pyrophosphate is synthesis of ubiquinone. Coenzyme Q10 in humans Coenzyme Q10 that we talked about under the electron transport chain. This has 10 isoprene units, 10 of these isoprene units. And coenzyme Q10 is made from farnesyl pyrophosphate. In the next step, the farnesyl pyrophosphate reacts with another farnesyl pyrophosphate. So 15 carbons plus 15 carbons to give us a 30 carbon intermediate called squalene. And this requires NADPH. So squalene with 30 carbons, you can see really is derived from six of these isoprene units. Each isoprene unit has five carbons, squalene has 30 carbons. So that's why we say squalene is derived from basically derived from six isoprene units. After several reactions, the squalene is then made into a cholesterol-like chemical called lenosterol. Lenosterol has the styrene ring just like cholesterol. The lenosterol is then converted to 7-D hydrocholesterol after several reactions. And then in the last step, 7-D hydrocholesterol is made into cholesterol. Recall that the 7-D hydrocholesterol is a precursor of vitamin D. It's interesting to note that uh, in fungi, uh, lenosterol is converted into ergosterol, which is required for the, for the fungi cells. And so this step here is actually inhibited by certain azole antifungal drugs. This step is catalyzed by this enzyme that is inhibited by azole drugs. These are antifungal drugs. So to just to summarize uh, cholesterol synthesis, uh, interesting to note that all the carbons of cholesterol come from acetyl-CoA. It's a very, very long pathway. So it requires a lot of acetyl-CoAs, a lot of ATPs, and a lot of reducing power in the form of NADPH. So 
we have talked about synthesis of cholesterol as well as fatty acids that require a lot of this uh, reductive power for reduction, this NADPH. So it would make uh, sense that in the next video, we shall look at where this NADPH comes from. Okay, and the answer is most of the NADPH comes from a pathway called pentose phosphate pathway, also called the hexose monophosphate shunt. Okay, so we will talk about this pathway, PPP, uh, in the next video. So until the next video, thank you very much once again for watching and supporting this channel. Uh, goodbye for now and have a very happy and healthy day.